welcome back to another colorful keto with Dory. So we're kind of set up um, opposite from how we usually do. So air quality might be a little bit off today, but um, we are going live from my Facebook page this time and I'm recording it to Instagram for you guys so you don't miss out. I'm so excited. It has been forever since we hung out with Dr. Ken. So I'm going to lean forward <laughs> so that I can see uh, when Dr. Ken gets here because I've got my phone in front of my phone instead of I usually do in front of my iPad so I can see. So I'm just trying to watch <laughs> watch when Dr. Ken gets here. Um, I hope you guys have missed Dr. Ken as much as we all have. I am ready, Dr. Ken. I'm already on. I'm going to message him on this one because he's messaging me, am I ready? So I'm going to let him know I am on and just waiting for him. So that way he should be with us any moment. And I'm just letting him know which page I'm on so that he can come find us. I'm so excited. It has been way, way, way too long since we've hung out with Dr. Ken. I, I think that this actually pulls us down to three weeks because we ended up missing um, when he was late running home. And the week before that, we had issues. So it's been quite a while since we've got to hang out with Dr. Ken. So as soon as he hops in here and I see him, and again, sorry on Instagram because I'm all like leaning over to see... <laughs> <laughs> leaning over to see when Dr. Ken arrives. <laughs> I'm so sad. And, and I will swipe away um, the comments on Facebook so that we can see a little bit better as soon as I see Dr. Ken come in. And I am super, super excited to get going today. And we have got a killer Monday on the go. So if you guys missed it, this afternoon we did a Q&A with Ask Nurse Cindy and she's amazing. Um, so much fun. That one is up on YouTube if you guys are looking for it. We're hanging out with Dr. Ken now. At 7 p.m. we're going to do a carnivore recap with Spirit Warrior Wendy. And then at 8 p.m., do you remember, guys, last week when I hung out with the keto teen, and that's Brittany, we're going to meet her mom, Lindy, and she's keto teacher mom, keto teacher mom on Instagram. So I'm super, super excited. Um, let me see. I uh, see if we can find Dr. Ken. I don't see him just yet. So I, I do see Nisha's here, so he should be moments after Nisha. And... Uh, and yeah, I'm so excited. Um, yes, Nisha, he needs to come to the Facebook side because I've got it backwards. And you said his IG was acting up. So if he wants to join me on the Facebook side on my public page, uh, Colorful Keto Bariatric Lifestyle Coach. <laughs> it's a mouthful. I know. I know it's a mouthful. Uh, Dory never says like just a little bit of stuff because, you know, Dory never says a little bit of stuff. <laughs> so he, he should be here any moment thank you so much Paula for sharing already I appreciate that I'm so excited and I know this is going to be a really really good one I, I think we're going to start uh, talking about the new carnivore challenge that, that Nisha and Dr. Ken are going to do in August so I'm curious if you guys want to uh, hang out and do that with Dr. Ken and we're adding 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 so exciting oh my goodness so much fun Hello, hello, Dr. Ken. There you are. There I am. You seem a I little glitchy, you. but not bad. Can you see me? I can see you. <laughs> can, okay. can you hear me? I can. Yes. Excellent. Good to be here again. Oh, we've I missed you, Dr. Ken. I to do this again. I know, I know, I know it sucks, but now I, I think this is the answer. And then maybe you can share this to Instagram? This is what I'm doing. So right now we're going live to Instagram. I'm recording what we've got going on on Facebook. So our Instagram people are watching us too. And then we'll put that on YouTube. So we're, we got it all figured out. We're set. So Excellent. we want to hear about all the fun stuff. Because you did Keto Fest and you did Low Carb USA, right? Or did you get to that one? That was last weekend. Nope. Yeah, I didn't get to that one. We did Keto Fest in New London, Connecticut, and it was amazing. So much good food, so many good people. We made a lot of connections. Uh, 
that that uh, well, I did speak there this year. Yeah, but I'm probably going to speak there again next year too. But I did. Well, that's what it was. But uh, yeah, so much good food, so many good recipes. They did. They did recipe demonstrations. <gasps> what is that noise? Can you guys hear that? No. Nope. It's a, it's good. Okay. Well, I'll ignore it then if you can't hear it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it was a blast, and so. They actually had doubled their size from last year, and wow. they're anticipating pulling again for next year. So if you guys want to go to Keto Fest next year, keep an eye out for the webpage because I'm telling you, it is a fun time, and the food is amazing. I was so jealous when I saw the post. Jimmy Moore posted Social Saturday, and I was like, oh, my God, that's, that is my department, yeah. The Science of Being Social by Dory. <laughs> that is. The only... <laughs> The only thing missing on Social Saturday was Dory's blue bobbing head right. around everywhere. I That's know. The only thing missing. I know. <laughs> so I hear you're doing a new challenge, and everybody wants to hear about that. So let's start with that today. So <coughs> starting August the 1st, and this was Misha's idea and Misha's challenge. I've okay. been carnivore for about five, six months now, about 95% carnivore. And so I'll have just a little veg here and by accident if it's stuck to the meat but sometimes I'll have a bite of asparagus or broccoli or Brussels sprout but it's 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 at least no more than five percent of my total intake per day okay and so I'm getting maybe one or two grams of fiber a day for the last six months and I know that's freaking everybody out going they're going yeah but what about bowel movements and we'll get to that in a minute okay so starting August the 1st if you guys want to try the carnivore challenge with us we're going to be eating meat products only okay. so any meat obviously from any animal that, that had a heartbeat that's fair game then okay. any animal product like eggs butter ghee what else they show lard obviously anything that came directly from an animal that's carnivore too okay so you're gonna skip olive oil coconut oil like plant-based fats that's right okay that's right no plant-based fats only lard and butter and ghee that'll be my only source of fatty oils that i cook with that's right. Okay. And how long are you guys, uh, how long is Nisha aiming for? Is, is she doing two weeks, gonna, a month? Uh, she's going she gonna to try to do it for the entire month of August. Okay. And on her on her YouTube channel, she's going to be trying to do a, a daily vlog, probably starting the 2nd Ooh. of August, talking about how she feels that day, what she ate that day, how she cooked it. She'll probably do some cooking videos as well. But it, nice. it, it, it won't be, you know, highly produced and edited. It's just going to be raw video footage of our month of carnivore and I think that'll be really interesting to people to just see okay how do you even do that and I think this this is an excellent topic for you and I to talk about because it so is. many people out there have had bariatric surgery and I'm sure they're wondering am I going to be able to do this if I if I've had gastro bypass or if I don't have gallbladder can I do carnivore and I think the answer is yes okay with kind of the standard uh, keto caveats that you you probably won't be able to do one big meal a day. You yes. have to break your carnivore up into two or three smaller meals in a in a in a six or an eight or a ten hour feeding window. But I think you can absolutely carnivore with us. And I'll tell you guys, I've gotten a lot of benefits from being a carnivore, even over and above being keto. And I, I'm still in love with the ketogenic way of eating. I don't want anybody to get that impression. I think the I think the carnivore diet is if this if this is keto, carnivores inside it's like a little subset of keto where it's just fatty meat, right? And so I yes. think that that's obviously still keto. It's just kind of a, a whittle down kind of keto. And I think for some people out there with the right DNA and the right gut bacteria, they're going to do so much better on carnivore than they even did on keto. Yes. Just like when I was paleo, I thought I was doing good until I came to keto, and I'm like. Dude, now I'm really doing good, right? I, I kind of had that same epiphany when I, after a month of carnivore, I'm like, dang, I feel good. I'm going to keep doing this for another month and another month, and now I'm up to six months. And Nisha has been eating fatty meat heavy keto, but she's going to try starting August 1st to do just carnivore for a month, and we want all you guys to join us. Okay. Well, uh, I love you, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to support you from the veggie side, because I, I already tried, and I know just from KetoCon that carnivore, not for Dory. Like, I did gotcha. three days of eating just meat, and Dr. Ken, I was so unhappy. Like, I, I went the yeah. last night to the hotel, I ate three Brussels sprouts with a tablespoon of avocado oil, and I was back to my same old happy self. So, I know for me... 
I think we really should almost have called it the carnivore experiment. Cause yeah. I don't want anybody to feel like, oh, I feel like a failure because I couldn't do that. I only did it for three days or a week yeah. or two weeks. That's not the point at all. This is not a competition. This is an experiment. We want you to try this. And then if you're like, dude, I felt like crap. I got depressed eating carnivore. I didn't like it. I think that's a victory because you learn something about yourself. And, I, and that's what we're trying to do is figure yes. out what's the best keto for us. And I think for some of us, the best keto is carnivore. And for others of us, like Dory, I think the best keto is more of a veg-heavy uh, keto. And I yep. think that's where Dory should live. She yep. needs those extra calories to dance around. I, I do, and I just love them. Like, for me, if I if I go without veggies, I crave them. Like, and I know that's how my body needs them. Yeah. And, and I want to really encourage everybody to just kind of lead the way your body goes. If you're like Dr. Ken and Nisha, and you're like, you know what? I don't really like the veggies that much. You know, it kind of upsets my stomach, or I feel kind of bloated. Then you know what? It's, it's really okay to cut things out of your diet. So let's talk about that, Dr. Ken. What kind kinds of things can we cut out of our diet without worrying about it like say we want to try carnivore or we want to try dairy free are, are we totally okay just to be like i'm done with that for the month or do we have to talk to a doctor no i think that's totally fine to do a month of dairy free now i would i would continue to use butter and ghee because they're 100 percent fat right yes but if you want to do a month without any dairy liquid dairy cream cheese ricotta cottage or any kind of cheese, I think that, that for some people, that they will feel great when they go dairy-free. I think that'll work for some people. Uh, I do much better if I don't use hardly any liquid dairy. Yes. I have much, much fewer gastrointestinal and, and allergy symptoms if I just don't do any liquid dairy. Other people do great with liquid dairy as long as it's you know very fatty. Uh, another great one is to try a month with no nuts whatsoever. For some people, that works really well for them. Another thing you can do is go a month with no nightshade. Yes. Uh, veggie, which is the tomato, the peppers, the eggplant, and obviously potatoes. But there, And then the tomatillos, there's a few other little nightshades. It's actually quite a big vegetable family. And I love nightshades, but I do better. I just do better without them. I feel better. I grow tomatillo, Dr. Ken. You do? I do. Yeah. We have them yeah, growing this nice. year. I'm super excited because, yeah, we, we do a lot of veggies at my house. But I will tell you a secret. Even though my fiance has not agreed to keto, he was like, you know what? I, I could carnivore. And I, I laughed at him and I said, you kind of already do because... Um, about three months ago, I stopped making a carb side at my house. Now, for the first year, year and a half that I ketoed, I still made them a carb side every day like clockwork. I just didn't eat it. So they still got a potato or a pasta or a rice, and I just skipped it. And then when my son decided to go keto three months ago, I was like, you know what? I just can't be bothered. So you know, maybe yeah. once a week they'll get a carb side. So I'll tell you what. He still drinks his liquor with his pop. He still has his out lunches. He still has all the junk. The only difference in my house is not making a carb side. Want to know how much he lost in three months, Dr. Ken? 12 pounds. Like, what the heck? Dude, he is tying up his pants with tie wire because he's a construction guy, right? And he's like, it's a belt. It's a belt. It works. My pants ain't falling down. It's a belt. That's right. I love it. I love this guy already. He's uh, genius. It's like, on average, that men do better on carnivore, but I suspect that part of that is social in nature, the way we're brought up. The way we're raised, that you know, if you see a picture of a woman eating something on the internet, it's always a salad, right? Yes. If you see a guy eating something on the internet, it's, it's always a, a piece of meat. That's right. And I just think that's kind of the way we're raised in Western society. And I think we, I, I really want a lot of women to try the car, carnivore challenge because I think a lot of women are, go, are going to say, dude, I feel better when I eat meat. And I'm, I'm, it didn't make me a harlot. So I think it's okay. I think <laughs> I can eat meat and not turn into a prostitute. <laughs> right. With some. You know, I don't know where that comes from, that women shouldn't eat meat. I don't get that. I think socially, it's because that's what's acceptable to order out. So if you're going out for dinner, you know, please order a glass of water, a salad, and a crouton. You know, that's right. that's what's acceptable for women to eat. When I was dating, if you went out and you said, you know what, I'll have me, you know, a double cheeseburger and fries and a milkshake, um, everybody looks at you and goes, um, she knows she's fat though, right? 
Like, um, does she know she's fat? Because that's probably why. And you guys know Nisha is very petite, right? She is. And, and we've we've actually had this happen in a restaurant before. She'll order like the twelve ounce ribeye or something, and the waiter will go, "Oh, now, honey, that's a big cut that's of meat." A big... And she's like, "Yeah, I know. Thanks for the extra information. I know what twelve ounces is." Right. And they've actually looked at her like, You're, "You don't really want oh. that, do you?" And she's like, "Yeah, I really want that. Thanks for your concern, but yeah." yeah. Well, and, and you so know what? I, it, it even I don't know. It happens all the other way around, Dr. Ken, because for me, I usually have to order off the kids' menu. It's pointless for me to order an adult meal, or I'll order an appetizer as my meal, and they'll look at me, and I'll be like, yeah, that's my meal, and then they double look at me when I ask them to wrap up three quarters to take home, right? Because I can eat one egg and two pieces of bacon, and I always get the eyeball, especially as I was losing weight. Because really, I was a 200-pound woman ordering one egg and two pieces of bacon, and they're thinking, girl, you ain't fooling nobody. You got a dozen donuts in your car. You ain't fooling nobody. Right, right, yeah. You got a big family-sized bag of Doritos in your purse. We know you right. do. I know you do. And you know what? I kind of want to touch there a little and say, you know what? Don't let people judge you for what you eat. Do you know what? Go to a restaurant, ask for what you want because you're paying for it. So ask them right. what they cook their meat in. Ask them what they cook their vegetables in. What do you do, Dr. Ken, if you're going to a restaurant and you want to order off the menu? How does that look for you and Nisha when you go out? Well, today I, I normally don't have lunch, but Nisha was in town. And so she said, you want to have some lunch? And I'm like, sure. And so we went to this restaurant in town called Smarter's. Uh, with smarter with a D and they actually cook everything in lard now thanks to Ooh. Nisha and I and, and, and Camden Tennessee is kind of going keto and so he doesn't even have vegetable oil in his establishment anymore and he's very happy about it because the lard is actually cheaper than the vegetable oil and it lasts longer in his fryers he doesn't have to change the oil as often as, as often because it doesn't become rancid like vegetable oils and so he's actually making money by cooking in lard and so even if people get french fries they are now less bad for you at smarters because they're fried in lard oh. and so you're getting that good healthy fat that tempers the carb load that you're about to get so you don't get the blood sugar spike now i'm not saying french fries are good for you don't get me wrong <laughs> i'm just saying they're a little less bad now because they're fried in lard and so i had a uh a six ounce sirloin and I had a uh, half rack of baby back ribs dry. That's what I had for lunch. Mm. And we had steak and chicken and grilled chicken strips, and that's what we had for lunch mm. with unsweetened tea. And so that was our lunch. And then when I got home, I had uh, I had uh, a ribeye and six eggs and three pieces of bacon. That's what I've had, and I'm done for the day. That'll be my two meals for the day. Wow, that sounds like so much food to me. <laughs> right. I've always been a big eater. I used to eat a lot more than I even than I do now. But I'm yeah, I'm a big eater. Yeah. Uh, I used to be. I, I won't lie. I used to be the girl who would, you know, go to the fourteen dollar Chinese food buffet and eat six or seven plates because you got to get your fourteen dollars worth. Yep. So let's talk about worth. let's talk about that a little bit and kind of the value that we get for money. Because it's the same concept. If you're getting, you know, a $14 all-you-can-eat buffet, what are we getting out of that? If we're buying a dollar box of cereal, it's worth a dollar, right? So maybe touch a little bit for us on quality of food and what quality do we need and what don't we? I think that's a great question about am I wasting money if I go to the $14 buffet but I only eat the good quality keto foods and maybe they only eat three or four dollars worth of food, did I just waste money? And my answer would be, hell no, no you didn't waste money. <laughs> Let me give you an example. When I'm counseling my patients and they're smokers and I'm like, you gotta quit smoking. And I'm like, how much do you smoke? They're like, oh, I smoke a pack a day. I'm like, okay, that's 20 cigarettes. So I'm like, okay, do you think you can live on 17 cigarettes a day? And they're like, yeah, I think I can do that. That's not that big of a deal. I'm like, okay, so every time you buy, but each day you buy your pack, I want you to take three cigarettes out and flush them. <gasps> pull it. Right. It, you're like, waste it. <gasps> and, then I, and then I ask them this key question. I'm like, if you, when you throw those three cigarettes away, are you wasting money or are you saving money? And they're like, I know this is a trick question, 
let me think about this. And they're like, no, you're right. I'm actually, in the long run, I'm saving money, aren't I? I'm like, yeah, you are. Because you're saving all those health dollars that you would have spent in the U.S. anyway. You're saving all the suffering that you're going to put yourself and your family through in the future. And you're weaning down your smoking habit. And so they're like, yeah, that's true. I've never thought of that. So if you go to the $14 buffet and you don't eat $14 worth of crap, you're not wasting $11. You're actually saving money in the long run because you're going to be healthier and happier. You're not going to have to take a carb coma nap when you get home. And you're going to be able to play with your kids and interact with your loved ones because you're not on the couch to sleep because your blood sugar and your insulin are high. And I just want to say poison is still poison even if it's on sale. Right. Even if it's tempting. Exactly. You know, That's after right. Easter. Cigarettes and junk food are poison. So, like, if Abby Grace, my youngest daughter, she opened a box of Lucky Charms in there. And she did have them with heavy cream, which kind of triggered me. I wanted to bowl, but I didn't get any. But, so, she doesn't like stale cereal. So, there's a whole box that has one bowl missing in it. And in about two or three days from now, I'll chunk that box. Yeah. Am I wasting money or saving money? I don't need that in my house. I don't need that temptation because I used to be a cereal junkie. Yes. Right? Like, I literally should have went to rehab for my cereal addiction. Yes. But I just broke it the old-fashioned way. And so I don't need that, that looks like a charm sitting up there looking at me with that damn little leprechaun. I don't uh. need that in my life. And so I'll throw those away in a day or two. And that's not wasting money. That's saving money in the long run. That leprechaun is evil. I'm just going to say that, Dr. Ken. He yeah. was my obsession, was too. Yes. Cereal was never breakfast food for me. It was bedtime snack. But it was my most oh, yeah. comforting bedtime snack. And I would have the big bowl. Like, you know, the salad size bowl. That's, let's mm -hmm. be honest, it's like a half of a yeah. box of cereal. And I would eat yeah. that every day before bed. Um, what I do on keto now is one of two things. I either will take a little bit of nuts. Like, I'll take some pecans, some walnuts, a little bit of um, coconut, and a little bit of... Um, whatever nuts I want, seeds, and I'll throw them in a little bowl. I'll add a little sweetener, a little cinnamon, a little heavy cream. It's not the texture, but it's the flavor that cereal yeah. was. I That's still feel stuff. like I'm eating it. Or chia pudding. Do yeah. you guys ever make the yeah. chia pudding? Yep. I used to, yeah, and I'll tell you, what you just what you just described, I used to do that every night before bedtime. I would yep. have a little bowl of pine nuts, pepitas, chia yes. seeds, uh, slivered almonds with heavy cream and a pack of stevia and, I, yep. and dude that is so delicious and that worked for me for a long time on keto yeah. but then i got to the point where it didn't i, I started stalling and it yes. would actually stall my, my weight loss and i didn't i didn't sleep as well because i was eating it right before bedtime and so i don't do that anymore but that for a couple of years three years that was my nightly ritual was a bowl of, of little nuts you know yes. with heavy cream and stevia Dude, it's heavenly, but oh, it's so good. I can't do that anymore, or I won't get to where I want to go. So let's talk a little bit about that, because I don't think that everyone knows about all the hidden carbs in nuts. Now, for me, I, I think I eat more. I, I love nuts, Dr. Ken. I think I eat more nuts than the average person. But for me, the carbs don't seem to bother me. But let's touch a little bit on that. Like, how much carbs are we actually getting in our nuts? Some nuts are quite carby, and I'll tell you right now, I freaking love nuts, man. Cashews and macadamias, and all. my new favorite is pilly nuts, but oh, which are very yes. high fat, very low carb, but they're expensive as hell. Yes. But dude, they are they are heavenly nuts. They're yes. nuts from heaven. But I love any nut except for pecans, and I like them okay. Yeah. But for a long time on my keto journey, nuts work just fine for me. I would put nuts in salads. I would put nuts everywhere. And they, I think the, I, I, they work well for me. But then I got to a point where if I wanted to go any further with my weight loss and any further kind of feeling better, I had to lay off the nuts. And so if you guys are still using nuts, I think it's fine if, if you're still gaining the successes that you're looking for. Yes. Uh, the lowest carb nuts, I think Pili, Pili nuts, P-I-L-I, they're the lowest yep. carb of all, but they're, they're pretty pricey. They are. Dude, they're good. Oh, my God, they're good. They uh, are. Walnuts are pretty low carb. Yep. Pecans or, or pecans, depending pecans. on where in the world Pecans, pecan. <laughs> right. They're pretty low carb. And then uh, I think uh, macadamias and then Brazil nuts are pretty yes. low carb. But my favorite of all is cashews. I freaking love cashews, oh. but they're pretty darn carby. Even they almonds, are. especially if you grind them up and make almond flour, yes. it's too carby for a lot of people. 
people. Yes. But don't just hear me say don't eat nuts. I didn't say that. <laughs> I used to eat a ton of nuts on keto. Yes. And it worked well for me in the, back in the beginning. But then I got to a point where if I wanted to go to the next level of my health, I had to I had to minimize the nuts. And then obviously on carnivore, I don't eat any nuts at all. And I although I still love them, I don't miss them. I don't crave them. And I know that's an odd thing to say, but it's almost like fatty meat just over is so satiating. I'm just over it. I just I'm yeah. like, yeah, I love nuts, but it's like you know, I, I love whatever, but I don't eat it anymore. Yeah. Well, and I, I will give you guys my best hint. Um, because I eat a lot of nuts and because I make a lot of the nut recipes, I lower the carbs by making almost everything with walnut instead of almond. So you're four grams of carbs a serving instead of 10. So you're cutting it in half. Um, low carb seeds too. You know, your pumpkin yeah. seeds, your sunflower seeds, they swap out even, even for your almond flour too. So um, yeah. what do you have going on this week, Dr. Ken, that we need to follow you around like your best friend for? <laughs> so we're, starting August 1st, we're going to be doing the Carnivore Challenge. And That's Nisha Wednesday. On her, on her, yep, on her YouTube channel. If you guys want to follow this, just Google Nisha Loves It. Okay. And you can find her YouTube, her blog, and everything else. But she's going to try to do a daily blog probably starting the 2nd of August and talk about recipes, what we ate, how she feels, if she's doing good, if she's about to quit. Because, you know, Nisha, she's she's not a bullshitter. If she's not feeling good on carnivore, she she'll, gonna wrap, do it. she'll wrap it up real quick. She'll let you know and she'll, she'll be honest with you just like she was about the fasting. You guys remember that. She's not she's not a long-term faster. It just doesn't work well with her and her Hashimoto's. And so if carnivore is not working for her, you can expect her to be brutally honest about that yes. and that's that i think that's what people deserve is to hear the truth they don't need us acting like oh this is the best thing ever if it's really not the best thing ever and so i'm going to be probably putting up another three videos on my youtube channel about wow. carnivore okay. topics one of which is going to be nitrates and nitrites and do it does bacon and hot dogs cause cancer or do they not i've been doing mm. some research on that for about a month and a half trying to get to the bottom of this whole nitrate nitrate nitrite issue and it's so cloudy so murky so so convoluted that it's taken me a month and a half to really kind of get to the bottom of it and be ready to make this video for you guys oh we're so excited and if you guys follow ask nurse cindy when i did live with her she said she's going to do at least two weeks with you guys she's really really excited oh, nice. to jump on board and try it so Check out her profile for the challenge as well. Experiment. Let's call it an experiment. Yeah. And what about? And so you've already kind of tried carnivore. You just you got you yeah. felt kind of down and dark, didn't you? Oh, it was so bad for me. Like my my mood was bad. I was constipated. I was unhappy, Dory. Like so. Yeah. I know for yeah. me, it's it's not a good fit. But I encourage everyone who wants to try it to join in. In my group, I'll post about it too so that they can try along and I'll post recipes for you guys. You know what? I am all in to help you any way I can. If you guys want extra carnivore recipes, you want to know how to get extra fats, hop in my group and I'll post some stuff for you. I just know for me, it's it's not good. So uh, I'll support you from the sidelines all my heart. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that. And I'm, I'm, I love it. You guys, listen to what Dora just said. She knows her body well enough to know that's not for her. And the only way to know that is if she's tried it. And that's yes. kind of why we thought the carnivore experiment or the car carnivore challenge would be a good thing. Because you, you think you know, but you don't know until you try it. And then you know for a fact, boom, I feel great, or no, that ain't for me. And I say try it. Experiment. It's your body. It's your diet. Customized to you. Absolutely. I totally agree 100%, and I'm excited to get started doing this. Yes, I can't wait for next Monday when we get the first half-week recap. <gasps> Absolutely. Absolutely. Have a great night. All right, Dory. See you next time. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Ken. You're amazing. Bye, -bye. Bye doll. Okay. And we will finish. Um,